okay and so again we have uh, LX LY and LZ which um, so the box is not necessarily a cubic box um, and uh, so they can have sides of, of, of different lengths okay so again the potential inside the box is zero the potential at the walls and outside the ball and outside the box is inf is infinite. This is the infinite potential well. Okay, so in, in the same way that we found in the one-dimensional case, outside the outside the box, okay, so outside the region where um, u var equals zero, we get the wave function has to be zero. Okay, so because we have an infinite potential there. Um, that means that we can't, we have, there should be no probability, no chance of finding the particle there, even quantum mechanically. And so in order to assure that, we have to have that the wave function is zero, so that when we square the wave function, we always get zero. That is, we have, there's zero probability for finding the particle uh, outside the box, okay? Um, and so um, since we have a time-independent potential, um, and since we assume that the spatial directions x, y, and z um, are uh, independent, okay, then we assume that the motion of the particle in the box in these along these three different directions uh, is also independent. They're also independent of each other. Okay, so we have three independent. Um, uh, spatial coordinates, and so uh, we we should also guess with our with our understanding now. We should be able to guess that the wave function um, is uh, now separable in the in the uh, spatial direction dimension uh, dimensions, and so we can write psi now as a as a um, uh, product of uh, of Functions in the that, that uh, only depend on uh, a the variable that corresponds to a particular direction. So f of x, g of y, h of z. I want to point out here. I forgot to say that we've basically designated. We've basically used a shorthand notation now, so we don't have to keep writing x, y, z all the time. Um, we've used the variable r to represent uh, basically the 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 position in three space x, y, z. Okay. So, um, so if we do that, if we if we make the separation of variables, okay, as as, as we discussed, then um, the Schrödinger equation will will can be written like this. Again, we have minus h bar squared over two m. Now we're going to take the derivative of psi with respect to x, so d squared by dx squared. But that only acts on f because g and h are independent of x. And so they just come out of constant uh, outside as a constant in this partial differential, and then same thing with the derivative with respect to y. F and h are independent of y, and f and g are independent of z. Okay, and um, I forgot a. Um, oops, uh, I forgot a um, close bracket here. Okay, and so. Uh, then this is all equal to the energy, a number, times um, times psi, which is f of x, g of y, h of z. Um, so this is another eigenvalue problem, just like we had before. It's just a three-dimensional eigenvalue problem. We have an operator operating on a function gives us a number times that function. Okay, so um, we can um, rewrite this equation that's in blue. The equation that's in red is this one rewritten, where we've now divided both left and right hand sides by um, um, by h bar squared over minus h bar squared over two m, and also by uh, psi, which is again f f g h. And when you do that, you're left with this equation here: one over f of x times d squared f d x squared plus one over g of y times d squared g d y squared plus one over h of z times d squared h d z squared is equal to minus 2 m e over h bar squared. The right hand side is a constant and each of the terms in the left hand side depends only on on one variable and um, so they also must be equal to each of them equal to a constant.